Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Hello and welcome to Getting to Know You. I'm your host, Robert Jakeway. On today's show, we have as our guest, Professor Philip DeNovo, who is the president of the American Italian Heritage Association here in Albany, as well as the executive director of the American Italian Heritage Museum and Cultural Center. Let's go meet him. Philip, I want to thank you very much for being my guest today. Thank you for inviting me. Before we get into the topic about the uh, American Italian Heritage uh, um, Association and the uh, Museum and Cultural Center, I'd like to have you uh, give us some of your background so we can know you better. Sure. I was born in Albany, New York, and my grandparents were immigrants. My parents were born here. I went to St. Joseph uh, School and burnt. <laughs> then went to public school, and then I graduated from Albany High. And then went on to uh, college after a number of years trying different things. And I went to uh, SUNY Albany, took graduate work at Colgate University, University of Iowa, and other places. Uh, so my education has been in many places. And I left Albany to teach at Morrisville College in 1965. I was the department chair there, and I taught uh, business administration for 32 years in the classroom. And after I retired, I waited three years to sell my home, not like this area where homes sell well, and came back. So it's been about seven to eight years that I've been back to Albany, where I'm from. My mother was from Troy, and my wife was from Schenectady, so we're a real Capital District family. You're real natives. Right. You're real natives. Um, now, when you were out in the Morrisville area, you, you, you established something, you created something. Let's talk about that. Yes, I started an uh, organization at Syracuse University Law School. I brought some colleagues together. I'd read a book, Richard Gambino's book, uh, Blood of My Blood, which mm -hmm. is 101 Italian-American uh, history. And that got me excited. And I asked these colleagues to come together, and we formed an organization. And now we're in our 28th year. We're in 38 states and four countries. And our membership is about 1,875. And we publish uh, a newsletter, and we do many activities in the community. And we reach out to other ethnic groups as well. Now, that's the American Italian Heritage Association. Yes. OK. Uh, and you also, because we're going to talk about not only the association, but about the cultural center right. and the museum. While you were in that area, you, you did have a museum, a cultural center museum uh, in Utica, I believe. Yes. That was a real humble uh, beginning. I went to the pastor of the church and asked him if I could use his uh, convent, as a former convent. And uh, we had about $10 in our pocket. <laughs> And people said, what are you trying to do that for? You know, I mean, they just didn't believe in it. Uh, we are kind of behind the uh, other ethnic groups. Uh, there are the larger ethnic groups have museums almost in every major city, especially the Jewish community or the African-American. But uh, ours was one of the first in upstate New York. And uh, in that building, we humbly began, but we built and we made it uh, so good that other uh, people would come and look at it and say, we ought to start one in our town. And we feel that we've given birth to the, the one that's going to be opening in New York City, one of the big ones, because they came and went back and got the idea. Scoped you out and yeah, see what they could do. And did much better because uh -huh. they have money and they have. And then in, the, in Iowa, they started one as a result of coming to see ours. So uh, now there are more Italian-American museums throughout the country, not as many as other ethnic groups. but. These are going to be important tools in our effort to preserve our heritage. Okay. Now, the, the association, back to the association right. for a bit. What is the real purpose of the association? Well, basically, it's to record our history in the United States and to preserve the, the culture, the heritage of our people. And it's, Italy has enriched the world. Uh, as you well know, two-thirds of the world's art came from Italy. 
we've made a great contribution to the world and those who are of any ethnic group should appreciate and enjoy their culture, their heritage. It's a part of you. You grow up in an Italian American family, your traditions, your customs, your way of looking at life. And that's going to be lost unless we do something about it. Other ethnic groups have done a much better job, I feel. The Jewish community, the Armenian community, the Greek community, they have established schools and have taught the younger people the language and the customs and traditions. We haven't done that. This uh, effort on our part, I think, is going to be able to do much better in, in those areas. Um, we do a lot in the community. I mean, we, go, we put exhibits in libraries and, and in uh, special places. I just got a, a call if I will do a program for a state agency. Uh, when you're looking for information, where do you find it if you want to know about the Italian-American community or Italian-Americans in general, or even about Italy? We're kind of a resource, and we do a lot of other things. We're part of Columbus Day celebration. We're part of the Festival of Nations, which is a very important event that takes place in our community. We represent Italy. And uh, we, uh, we have a speakers bureau. These are some of the things, just some of the things that we do. So you're well established in the community. I mean, yes. people know enough to call you. And, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a mighty effort on your part. You've really held this together and, and, and created a lot of the dynamics. You have other people who assist well, you. And, and I'm, I want to make sure that uh, I tell you this, Bob. You know, no man is uh, an island. We, we need other people. And we have a lot of people with uh, resources and ideas and talents. We don't have enough, but we have a group that have really supported this concept. And it's important that you have a following. And a lady who's 87 out in Illinois just sent me a very generous check. Even though she's never going to see what I'm doing, she believes in it. So there are people out there, maybe they can't give you their time, but they're giving you some other kind of support. And that's very important in any effort of like this. In our outreach to other ethnic groups, we compare notes and we network and we share the fact that all uh, ethnic groups that have been here for a long time, uh, we're all having difficulty because as they're intermarriage and people move away from their local community, it's much harder to keep these ethnic groups going. Fortunately, we're a large group. There's about 170,000 Italian Americans in this region. But if you were Armenians, which is a much smaller community, they have a more difficult time. Now, when you talk about region, how do you define region? Well, it's, uh, it's about like six counties in okay. surrounding here. You know, mainly it's Albany uh, County, Schenectady, and Rensselaer. All but right. then we go to Montgomery and to some other areas that surround here. Because we have a fairly uh, um, large Italian-American community right in the Albany oh, yes. this area right here. We're the l second largest ethnic group in Albany County. Okay. Uh, the Irish are first, and the Italian Americans are second. Now, the association, do you have regular meetings? Do you meet yes. on a regular basis? And where are you meeting right now? Right now we're meeting at the Italian American Community Center. There we have a nice working relationship. And I'm, I meant to point out that other, eth other Italian American organizations, if they don't have an answer, they'll call on me. So that we do a network in that regard. Uh, the Italian American Community, Community Center, I'm a member there. We have a good working relationship with them. They have allowed us to use their facilities, and we do. We have a monthly uh, cultural presentation. Okay. Every month we invite a speaker. Uh, we had the honor of having you one time. <laughs> and uh, we have some wonderful talent uh, that have come. Uh, somebody McEnany gave us a wonderful talk about the Irish and the Italian connection just a few months ago. Uh, tonight we have a program. Uh, uh, about the Italian language, next month storytelling in the, in the Italian tradition. Now is this open to people uh, outside of the association? Yes, it's always free and open to the public. Okay, and how do people find out about this? Usually through the newspaper if they're not okay. a member. Okay. And uh, we try uh, to inform people through the media. Okay. Now, and that's on Washington Avenue Extension? Yes. Okay. Now, of course, your desire would be to have people um, join the association. Yes. Okay. And we'll talk about that a little, sure. uh, little bit down the road. Um, so let's move over to from the association because you don't really have a home now. You're yes. using a nice facility. Mm -hmm. And you are now have your sights on, you know, opening, establishing a, 
um, a cultural center and a museum. Yeah. Let's talk about that. We've, uh, after seven years of searching, uh, one of our members saw this building and fell in love with it. It's a mission style building, the former Our Lady of Mercy uh, Catholic Church on Central Avenue. And we bought the rectory and another building, so we have a campus of three buildings. The mission style church belongs in New Mexico. It's so out of place in this area, but it's unique and it's beautiful building. And it, uh, when it was a church, uh, it was w one floor. But when the church sold the building in 1975, they, bu they sold it to a, a company that put in another floor. So there are two floors in this building. It's an historic building. Uh, Italian immigrants helped build it. Oh, really? Yes, that makes it interesting. And on the second floor, the architecture is still there as if it were a church. They didn't destroy that, so they've kept inside a lot of the integrity of the building. And the first floor will be the museum, which will honor the Italian immigrants and tell their story, and also the contributions that Italian Americans have made. On the second floor will be the cultural center, where we'll teach everything from language to cooking to opera workshops to genealogy, etc. So you'll have your programs that you're having now elsewhere. Yes, we have a little hall there, okay. which is great, and a library and uh, meeting rooms and classroom and a small kitchen. What kind of things are going to be in the museum? Uh, now, you, you had a collection, I, I take it, yes. in Utica. You, you probably brought that with you, or most of it anyway. Um, but what, other ki what kind of things are you going to be showing, displaying? Well, we've collected for a number of years artifacts and memorabilia that tell the Italian-American story. Everything from the Mutual Aid Society, badges and, and banners, to uh, Immigrants making, for example, uh, they were so poor that they couldn't afford to buy a rosary and they took olive pits and made a rosary out of it. And that is really something worth keeping because it's uh, Italian-American folk art. And unique. And unique. Uh, and we've collected uh, a number of things that were brought by immigrants or made by immigrants or used by immigrants so that we'll have a story to tell by artifacts and memorabilia. But also we're going to tell our story through panels and, uh, and other m vehicles. The state of New York has told me that we have a treasure. And if we didn't take these things, they would have been thrown out and lost. One of our members went to a garage sale, it was interesting, and she bought these uh, Mutual Aid Society badges. If she hadn't bought them, they would have been thrown away. And they're an important part of our now history. Now they're artifacts. Yeah, because really oh. these Mutual Aid Societies were marvelous. Uh, when a w woman, say, lost her husband, uh, there was money to bury her husband. These mutual aid societies took care of the immigrants if they were members. And they, that's an interesting story that many people don't know about, and we can tell that story. We have made such a mark in this country that I don't know how one museum can tell the story. I'm working now on the research. It boggles my mind the contributions that we have made to the United States. Right now, we're so happy to, to say the chief of staff in the, is an Italian-American. The head of the Navy is a New York State guy who from Canastone, New York, who's the head of the Navy, who's an Italian-American. Now, you might say, why is that important? Mm -hmm. The Sopranos and the Mafia has done a, damage, has done a lot of damage to our image that when people uh, run for uh, office or are in business, they, w they wonder uh, if they have been connected with the mob or mafia. So the gangster image. Yeah, and the Sopranos, you know how popular they are, and it's a terrible image because uh, in my grandfather's case, he came with $10, raised nine children, and left a quarter of a million dollars by very hard work. Honest as the day is long. And so, We've got to counteract that image. So when young kids come in and they can see, look at Joe DiMaggio, look at this guy, look at that guy. I think role models are important, for, especially for young people. Italian Americans in general, I don't think, worry about that. They know who they are, yeah. and they worry. And they don't worry about you know that image as much as I do as an educator. I want to make sure the public and our young people know the positive image. That's a good point. It's a good point you're making. 
Okay, so so now you're going to you're going to have an art gallery. Yes. This is not just a chronology and artifacts. You're actually going to have art, and and you, we talked about sculpture as well. Yes. Uh, yeah, we ha we have a young uh, doctor who's going to uh, be in charge of our gallery. He, he, it's a hobby of his, and he's going to take care of that. And we'll be able to give artists on the local level uh, an opportunity to have a show. We did that in Utica. We were, it was a very popular part of our offering. And uh, we'll be able to do uh, even a bigger art show by using the hall when the opportunities arise. One of our members is, is uh, Terry Cosmo Bohr, and the sculpture building at SUNY Albany is named after her. Oh, really? Okay. And she, uh, mm -hmm. she's a lovely lady, and she is now working on uh, two pieces that she's going to donate to our museum. And her pieces are all over, and it's quite an honor to have her in our... So these are original pieces of art that are being done for your... She's work. making one right now for us of Garibaldi's boot and sword and shirt that will uh, be donated to our museum. And she's giving one a uh, black onyx of her mother who was an Italian immigrant. So as more and more people know what we're doing, I think we're going to be able to add to our collection, not only in art, uh, but in other areas. A lot of people are approaching me and I say, hold on to it because we don't have a, a room for it right now. But we do have a museum committee that will sort this all out and decide which ones we'll accept because you can't accept everything. Right. The, the, the sad thing about it is that uh, a lot of this material will be lost if it's not accepted, but you can only... Well, I suppose, too, like, like a lot of museums um, or cultural centers, that if you can have a storage facility, right. something where you can keep it safe, you can have a rotating collection right. as well. Because as we're talking, I'm just seeing this thing get larger and larger oh, yes. and larger. Yes, yes. And one of the th things in the museum, we're going to have a special exhibit room. We're going to reach out to the ethnic community uh, and give them an opportunity to use that room on occasion. And so, you, so you're talking about other groups besides yes, Italian like Americans? Yes, like the Armenians will, will be one of, uh, one of the first groups we've worked uh, work closely with them. And they celebrate, you know, the genocides in April. Maybe that would be a good chance for them to, to do a uh, show in, in our special exhibit room. One of the women who is in charge of our um, uh, remodeling has a very uh, artistic bent, Rosanna Ayupa. And uh, she has really done a beautiful job with a, a lot of the uh, buildings and selecting the right colors. For uh, one of the things that you might be interested in, we're doing the Tuscany red. Are you? Yes, in, in a lot of the exterior buildings, which will add a nice European touch to our buildings. And I think the landscaping and everything will be improved with time. And uh, it'll give us a little bit of Italy in uh, the capital district. Oh, nice. A little bit on the ethnic community. You, you actually work with other groups. Oh, yes. And you, it's like a bridge, a bridge building um, uh, operation. And I, I think that's exciting. We've had, you know, the Irish-Italian connection. We've had, uh, uh, at Christmas time, we, had, we reached out to the Swedish uh, club, and we did Santa Lucia with the, the Swedish kids with the candles in their, in their wreath around their head, and they, they sang a song about St. Lucie to the Italian tune, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> and the girl who spoke, she's Swedish, and her husband was Italian. Wow. We've reached out to uh, the Armenian community. We've done some w wonderful things with them. We've reached out to uh, other ethnic uh, communities, and we're building a bridge. We get to know each other. And the Festival of Nations has about 23 nations, and we are on a first-name basis, and we work together on that. And they are also interested, I'm sure, in what I'm doing because they also, from time to time, will have an opportunity to show off their uh, culture. Well, it's a real groundbreaker. You are a real groundbreaker here. I mean, I can't think of anything like it. I'm not sure. Maybe I just don't know about it. But uh, let me ask you, um, are you are you planning to work with schools? Oh, yes. That's a good uh, question because they're so important in our planning. Uh, when we had the museum in Utica, this little kid who's about eight years old came with his father, and his father had a camera, and he took a picture as this kid described what he was seeing. And he took that VCR and brought it to his uh, school and showed the rest of the kids about what he saw. We work with grade school, high school, and colleges. I gave a talk at the SUNY Albany Italian American Studies uh, 
class last year. We, I have given a talk at the Albany Law School. We're working with the lawyer, the Italian American Law Association. Uh, so we have really reached out to the young people who are our future. We have to keep in mind that uh, we're not getting many people from Italy anymore. Italy is doing very well. It's a highly industrialized nation, and there are very few people uh, coming out of Italy anymore. People are staying put. They're staying because they're living a good life okay. there now. Okay. Not like our ancestors. Right. And therefore, we don't have the Italian grandmother that teaches the grandchild. So we're going to have to do that ourselves. We're going to have to teach future generations. This is an interesting comment, Bob. You know we're probably into the fifth generation, sixth generation of Italian Americans now? I did not know that. I mean, in Albany, the first Italians to come to Albany were 1626. Oh, wow. They were Protestants who had married Dutch men, but they were Italians. And there's a number of people that came to Albany that were of Italian descent. Now, those people have blended in, so we don't know. Don't know but are. some of those names are first Albany families. It's very interesting. And in other parts of the country, uh, you know, they've been here since 1626. So you're really bringing up the whole awareness issue here. I mean, terms of people are just aware of, of the little nuances. Yes. In, in the, um, are you going to actually have tours then uh, in the facility? You're going to have school groups come and other outside groups, so you'll have a, a regular schedule of people. A drop-in, is it intended to be just a drop-in as well? Yes. We'll have hours, and then, you know, we'll have special tours as well. One thing I think is important is to give people a preview of what the museum really stands for. Yes. As you know, when you go to a lot of museums, they show you uh, a video. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm planning on doing. And showing the conditions on the ships as they came here in the uh, late 1800s. And the what uh, Ellis Island was like and the uh, indignities that they had to endure as okay. immigrants. The one fear they had was that if they had an eye disease, they would be sent back. Now here you are, a mother with a child who has an eye disease. You can't come into the United States. What do you do? So we want people to realize what a horrendous experience that was. And I think a picture is worth a thousand words. If we can do that as a preview before they go and see the artifacts of memorabilia, they'll get more out of it. Sure. It certainly sets the stage. Nicely. Yes. I want to make sure they understand that. When we were talking earlier a little bit about this in preparation for you, you mentioned about name changes and yes. people, people's you know, need, I guess it was, to change their name. You want to talk a little more? I think many people don't realize this, Bob, but there was an awful lot of prejudice and discrimination in the United States. Um, unfortunately, uh, that isn't as tr true today, even for m more recent immigrants. But there was a know-nothing party in the United States that wanted to burn churches and didn't want these immigrants. Well, this was a very tough time for a lot of immigrants, not only Italian Americans. But Italian Americans often would not get work with their name. So they changed it. First of all, it was hard for people to pronounce in some cases, but others, they didn't like them. They called them a lot of words that uh, we don't appreciate. And so they changed their name. They, they left the vowel out or they, one very Italian-American family in Utica, their name is Spring. Well, they took Prevera, which is, a sp is Spring, yep. and they changed it into English and made it spring. Now that wasn't done at the Ellis Island experience. I mean, sometimes, sometimes it, was. it was, but it was also done after. Yes, and sometimes choice. too, though, if you work for somebody, if he, he might not be able to pronounce your name, he gave you a name or gave you a number. He called you by number. That's an indignity it right sure there. Is. But uh, I can understand a little better now as an educator when I got children in from Afghanistan or somebody, I couldn't pronounce those names. And so what, what people have done is they'll, they'll at least add an English first name. <laughs> so you could call them Joe, even though the, there's no Joe in that particular country. But it was done to blend in. It was done to be able to get employment and all those things. I'm, I, I have a Polish background. Yes. And, and my mother mentioned that about how it was sometimes difficult. To, for, she didn't want people to know or they did, when they were younger especially. So. I think the second generation also had the worst problem. I'm third. My, my, my parents were born in the United States. The second generation wanted to become American as quickly as possible, and the parents wanted them to. So often they didn't teach them the language, and uh, 
The third generation is often the generation that picks it up again because they're not as close to the prejudice and discrimination uh, and the, the need to be Anglo-Saxonized. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You mentioned a key word, language, and I was looking through one of your um, uh, newsletters here, and you made a, a fairly compelling case, I would say, for the fact that you know, everyone is learning, let's say, we know we have a, a large uh, Hispanic population yes. in this country, so it's good to learn Spanish, but you're making a case for learning Italian. Well, I think anyone who loves music must realize the great role that Italian language has played in, in music. And Italy is a highly industrialized nation, and it needs a lot of people who can speak Italian. People want to work in Italy, or people want to work in the United States for Italian firms. Uh, uh, the Italian language is a musical language. It's one of the most beautiful languages in the beautiful world. beautiful language. Yes. And I think it also helps to keep one's identity. Uh, many people were discouraged from learning the language. And my wife uh, only spoke Italian when she was young. And when she went to school, she had to learn to speak English. And now she doesn't speak Italian because you have to really use a language or lose it. And uh, the language is too beautiful, I think, to, to lose. A lot of pride there. So you're going to actually, are you going to be offering language A lot of Italian well? classes, especially those who want to go to Italy, let's say, and just learn a conversation Italian, sure. a few words to ask. Uh, one thing I learned in Italy was quanta costa, how much is it? <laughs> so those, those are some nice words that you can learn. Understanding the answer would probably be good, too. Uh, yes. <laughs> In the old days when it was lira, I mean, it was 1,500, you know. Now euros, right? Now it's euros. Um, talking about the newsletter, you publish a newsletter, I would say, probably six times a year? Yes. Okay. And what do you, what do, you do in the newsletter? Well, the newsletter is read uh, by our members in 38, census, uh, 38 states, as I said before, in four countries, because it's chock full of information. If you want to learn about the Italian... Uh, the Italians and the Italian-American experience, it's chock full of ideas and news, traditions, customs, our celebrations, recipes, uh, language uh, opportunities, uh, and I, it's a digest, so you can pick it up and drop it without reading the whole thing at the... I'll, I'll say that. It's, it's got mm -hmm. a lot of stuff in here, and this is really, you know, your effort. You really spend a lot of time and you, you pull a lot of things together here. It's 28 years, and I'll tell you a quick uh, interesting story. A friend of mine has a PhD. He read the newsletter and he said to me, you must have made these things up. I said, you, are, you have a doctor degree, and you don't know your own culture, your own heritage. You're not going to learn those things in school. John Cabot was really Giovanni Cabuto. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, a kid reads John Cabot, how you know, he doesn't even associate with the fact that he was an Italian. So you'll learn those things in the newsletter. Now, how does one get the newsletter? You simply have to join. And okay. uh, our membership is open to everyone. You don't have to be an Italian-American or married to an Italian-American. We have a lot of people who are members because they love things that are Italian. Mm -hmm. uh, our membership is $20 for two or more people okay. and $18 for an individual. You send a check to the American Italian Heritage Association. Can you give the address for us? P.O. Box 3136, Albany, New York, 12203. Okay. And we have a website, as you well know. Right. And we're going to post the website yes. on the air so people can, can find that if they want to explore some more. You also have a phone number in case somebody wants to give a phone call and, and find out some more information. Yeah. Yes. It's my own personal phone until we open our office. It's 518-435-0591. And the best hours are to get me are 12 to 5 okay, and after 7. Okay. Basically during the week, Monday through Friday? Yes, okay. Monday through Sunday. Oh, okay. I work seven days a week. All right. And I'm supposed to be retired. You're tireless. <laughs> You're tireless. <laughs> now, we, we, I, I almost failed to mention, You're, you've got the building, you're making all these plans, and you really have a target date to at least open it up, yes. right? What is that? We're hoping April. Okay. I'm an eternal optimist. <laughs> Because today it's not easy to meet the uh, deadlines, and, uh, but we're, we're getting close, and we really are anxious. And we're going to have a grand opening, and everyone in the area will have an opportunity to know about it because it'll be in the media. 
But right now, as you go by our building, you see every day we hope that it's evident that new changes are being made. Today, we moved in a lot of new display cases that we purchased, and we just can't wait till we get that lift in. Important. For handicap, right. and that has to be done. And that, then we're ready for to go to the town and colony and hopefully get our CO, which gives us permission to open up the building to the public. Great. Well, I wish you well in the venture, and we're going to follow you closely so we, oh, can, great. we can pick it up then. Um, we're about ready to close right, right now the program. I wish we had more time, but is there anything you'd like to say uh, to, as a lasting comment for, uh, for uh, our viewers? I think that... In today, there's a lot of worry about, you know, the illegal immigration. And we forget that when legal immigrants come here, uh, the history has shown a great love for the United States. I am an American. I'm of Italian descent, which I'm very proud of. I think what we bring to the United States is an enrichment, a richness that the United States has really benefited from. So because we want to hold on to our, our traditions and our customs, that in no way takes away from the great love that we have for this country. We're Americans who love our heritage. And no matter what heritage you have, and there are many people out there that come from different places, we are probably as good American as anybody because we appreciate the great opportunity this country has given us. And we want to make it the best country we can, and we think we have something to offer. Well, thank you, Phil. I, I, I really have enjoyed having you here today, and thank I look forward so to talking much. to you some more. Thanks thank again. you again. Thank you. And thanks for joining me on Getting to Know You. I hope you liked today's program, and will plan on joining us again next week. Until then, have a good one.